Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to WRC. Today we're going to continue with our career mode playthrough. Of course, a fresh playthrough for the 2024 season update. This playthrough aims to take us from the WRC junior ranks all the way upwards of the Rally 1 cars and the main WRC championship as we work our way through, of course, the juniors and the main WRC championships, but of course, some of the side ones in game as well. And that is where we're going to begin with episode number two off the back of a fairly disappointing hospitality event this time we start our first major championship of the season we will be starting the front wheel drive masters trophy championship running in the s1600 category fielding a plucky little citroen c2 so with all that done and out of the way let's go ahead and get started with round one of our first major championship so here we go with the Front Wheel Drive Masters Trophy. Rally Scandia is going to be round number one of five for this championship. We're running in the S1600 category with a plucky little Citroen C2 Super 1600. 225 brake horsepower, as you can see, a fairly inexpensive vehicle and one that we don't mind taking a few knocks to when it comes to our overall repair budget. So here we go, Rally Scandia for round one of the season. Whilst episode 1 did see us run a hospitality event that was a purely loaned vehicle, we do own this car and of course this is going to be one of our major championships for the season with objectives here for the benefactor. So we really want to get performing straight out of the gate on one of the toughest rallies in the entire game. So here we go, stage 1, let's kickstart things off and see how we manage to get on. So stage one and two is going to see us running the forward way on the stage and then doing it again straight away in reverse. These are very tough and long stages. These are going to be the longest ones that we're going to see in the entire rally. So we're definitely getting started in probably the harshest way possible as we've got to run these back to back with no service in between. So the main thing I wanted to really do for these first two stages was just trying to keep it as clean as possible. We're not really going to go for speed or really anything like that we just want to get through the stage as cleanly as possible and bring the car home to the service without too much damage as long as we can survive these back-to-back -back stages really that's the hardest part of the entire rally done and dusted and when it comes to my own driving style definitely snow and ice is probably my weakest in the entire game so this was certainly set to be a tough one for me now as we got into the stage honestly we weren't doing too bad as you can see, we're almost neck and neck with the class leader, and we're not really pushing too hard to the point that we're putting ourselves at really that much risk. As you can see, though, it's a very, very tight stage. Most of the time, you're going to be surrounded by a big snowbank and a lot of rocks on the inside of corners. It makes for a very, very tough and grueling rally. Even through the fast parts, just like you see in here, it is constantly like this and is always putting you at risk of a major damage or even even terminal damage if you just make a slight mistake. As we go through the second split, we are going to manage to pull out a half a second lead. Again, we're just taking our time for this opening stage. We're just trying to keep the car in as good of condition as possible. And whilst there's been a few moments that could have led to an accident, we have managed to avoid them so far. And as we continue pushing into the latter stages where it's really starting to open up with the rocks disappearing and mainly just the likes of the forest around us, we do end up making our first silly little mistake. But luckily, we do manage to get away with it, not ending up rolling the car or ending up with any major damage. Pushing on, we do manage to get ourselves up across the line for stage one. And this is going to give us a winning time around about six seconds quicker than P2. And to say we weren't really pushing too hard, that is exactly the result we want. So stage one complete, that's going to move us over to stage two, where as mentioned, we're going to be running the same stage, but in reverse this time. Now, honestly, I'm feeling quite comfortable with the Citroen. We got through the opening stage without any damage or any proper moments that could have really risked the car. And I'm feeling quite confident considering we've just ran this stage. So I've memorized a lot of it on the way through the first time. So I really want to push for stage number two and push out a massive lead over the rest of the field. Now that is exactly what I'm going to be aiming to do, considering on these longer stages, if you're running it for a second time and you've kind of got it nailed down what you're going to be doing, you can bring out a massive lead in the overall rally standings just by pushing on these longer stages. 
Of course, it's risky because if anything goes wrong, then honestly, you've got a long way to drag the car to the end of the stage, but I just wanted to get the pedal to the metal and absolutely fly through this. Sector by sector, our lead was really, really building up. As you can see, we come to the second to last sector and we were around about 51 seconds up. So after building up a fairly substantial lead, we could have certainly extended that to way over a minute come the end of the stage. However, unfortunately, just after passing that sector, we would end up with what started off as a fairly small mistake ending up as a fairly big one. Unfortunately, we got stuck on the snow, got put down a snow bank in, and then just couldn't get the car out for what felt like an eternity. And in the end, when we crossed the finish line, we did end up with a 32.4 second gap there. So losing a chunk of time. And unfortunately, that meant that all of that hard work in the early part of the rally was just really kind of going to waste there. However, we do manage to keep a 38.6 second lead. Then comes our first service area. Now, at this point, we don't have too much damage to the car, so we're just going to fix some of the mainly wear and tear on the vehicle. Um, there was a few things like the steering and exhaust that had took a knock, so we just kind of got those repaired. Onwards then to stage three. We are still on day one here, however, we are going into our first night stage. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm not a huge fan of Rally Scandia. It's probably one of my weakest ones, and when you turn it to night, that is just asking for trouble. So we're going to get away on the stage here and try and push on and get this one done. Now, honestly, it is going to fly by in comparison to the first two stages, those taking over 20 minutes to complete. However, we did end up having some silly moments here. We did manage to push out a six-second lead to begin with, but a few bumps on the snow bankings really did throw us off. However, as we got through the second sector, once again, we did manage to extend it to 11.8 seconds, so we were running quite well. Then it gets into some of the tighter sections, and I was noticing that the car through these sections was losing a ton of time to the class leader. So I'm not really too sure why we're losing so much time through here, as it felt quite decent, but we certainly were. Which meant that we were coming into the latter stages of the rally, that we were starting to bleed off a lot of time. And then thankfully though, when we come up and finish the rally um, for this stage, we did end up with an 8.5 second gap. So a lot of time lost in that sort of midsection there. Uh, but we did manage to bring it home with another stage win, and that is going to extend our lead once again. Let's move on then to stage number four. So once again, we're running another night stage here. This was an absolute breeze, honestly. Much cleaner this time around. And when we come up across the line, we do manage to get another nice stage win here and an extra split of 10.2 seconds. So that is a pretty good time. Exactly what I could have wished for as we finish off day number one. So overall, a pretty gruelling rally to kick us off with. We do have, of course, the two long stages and then, of course, the night stages back to back there. And as we finish up stage four and day one of the rally, we do have a fairly decent gap to the rest of the field. 57.4 seconds over second place and 1 minute 14 over third. So moving on to stages 7 and 8. Honestly, nothing really happened in 5 and 6, so I didn't really want to touch on them. They were nice and clean, and we did continue to build up that lead that we had. However, you'll notice there's a lot of wear and tear to the car as we get onto stage 7. However, once we got onto stage 7, you may notice that the radiator damage is there. And whilst we didn't really have any major knocks or anything like that on stages 5 and 6, it does seem that a lot of wear and tear was happening to this car that we just couldn't get repaired off in any of the service areas and unfortunately it would affect our performance almost instantly um, again as you can see another moment here in the second sector just avoiding rolling that car but whacking those rocks pretty heavily did mean that we were taking some extra damage and once again it was a similar story when we got into sector three unfortunately just narrowly avoiding a roll here but once again taking a little bit more damage from the snow bankings and as you may have noticed there is some you know fairly big plume of smoke coming from the actual bonnet of the vehicle there and unfortunately that is where we started to lose a ton of performance we just couldn't get the speed that we once were able to with this XS1600 car 
and unfortunately uh, we were starting to bleed a lot of time just hoping for a service area to appear um, so we could get the car fixed. At the end of this 10 mile stage we did it in a 10.49.6 even with the damage and the mistakes and that is going to give us another stage win actually 29 seconds ahead. So, so far not too bad and that gave us an overall stage lead, uh, sorry rally lead of 51 seconds. But unfortunately, stage 8 is where all of those mistakes in stage 7 would start showing their ugly faces. And unfortunately, this would be the beginning of the downfall of this rally. Although we had a fairly sizable margin in front, unfortunately we do have some engine damage on the car beginning the stage. We have the radiator damage and we are majorly down on performance almost instantly on what is again another 10.6 mile mammoth stage. Now this wouldn't have been too bad if it was one of the shorter stages after that long one where we made a bunch of mistakes. Uh, but unfortunately it was another mammoth stage and unfortunately this was really going to bleed into our overall rally lead time of course we were majorly down on power at this point the car was just choking up we were barely able to get it up some of the elevation changes and honestly accelerating took an absolute eternity as you can see at this point in the rally we're just struggling to get up anywhere and honestly it was just a proper nightmare getting this car home and we do actually have a service area after this but unfortunately just because of all the major damage to the vehicle it will be almost impossible to get the major work done uh, just for that final stage so unfortunately a lot of this uh, you know issues that we're having here are basically here to stay until the end of the rally in the end we push out that 11 minute 11 seconds point three and that is actually going to manage to be a stage win as the car is almost crawling up the elevation changes here to the marshal and that is going to give us a 53 second lead over p2 in the entire rally so that is a decent margin going into the final stage even with the you know lack of power we're putting out we should be able to drag the car home hopefully um, again with a service we're going to try and get the majority of the main issues fixed just so we can try and drag the car home uh, we do end up with a inspection time of 23 minutes um, so we didn't actually incur a penalty in the end as we go to the final stage as you can see though the major issues are still there the car's pluming smoke at this point and unfortunately this stage would end up being a downfall although we do have a healthy 53 second lead things are about to get a whole lot worse so here we go final stage of the rally let's get it underway and just try and survive this as you can see almost instantly off the line we are lacking a ton of power and although the radiator is pretty much fixed of course that engine damage is really going to hamper our performance as we go through the entirety of this stage now unfortunately we did end up with a pretty big moment through around about uh, sector 4 of the stage this was a whack on the rocks and that did end up just rolling us and unfortunately we did end up with a puncher as well and as we pushed on forward we would end up with a blowout thankfully it was just one of the tires and not both that would have been of course terminal damage like we saw in the Peugeot before uh, in the hospitality event but unfortunately I was very very stubborn and I just wanted to drag the car home now because this wasn't a 10 mile stage I thought okay maybe I'll be able to get away with a bit of it uh, but unfortunately no as you can see when it came to the major elevation changes in the final sectors and um, we were crawling around at about 20 miles per hour um, so that really would kind of just spell our downfall although we could have took the uh, you know minute and a half penalty for changing the tyre and um, we probably would have been around about the same anyway of course with that engine damage and the puncture in tow in the end we ended up three minutes down on the stage and overall we lose first place and end up p7 two minutes 16.8 seconds down we do take away six points but after throwing away such a major lead that is a disappointing result for our first major championship of the season so really not the result that we wanted of course only taking six points from an event that we pretty much had 25 points in the bag with um, is majorly disappointing so we're going to set overall seventh in the drivers championship of course we can start making out who our main rivals are going to be in terms of the team's championship we sit in a relatively modest um, p5 um, so not as bad as the drivers championship 
Now, in terms of our main rivals, we can see exactly who we're aiming to beat next time. We've got Gage, Bartak, and Herrera, who we're going to be aiming to get the jump on and uh, hopefully manage to take away some points from them as we return to this championship in a few episodes' time. Once again, running the plucky little Citroen C2 S1600. So, that is going to be it. Next time around, you're going to see us kickstart our WRC Junior title fight. We're going to be kicking off the main championship of our season at Rally Sweden. So once again, we're going to be on the snow, but a lot different from what you're seeing here in Rally Scandia. And um, that is a much quicker rally overall. Very, very flat out a lot of the time. But once again, it's that all about that risk versus reward. Um, huge snow banks around us. So that's going to be a very entertaining one as we move over to the brand new uh, Fiesta Rally Free Evo for that. So that's going to be an enjoyable one using one of the new 20. 24 season cars anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one take care guys peace